This month at the CLF, we are talking about desire. And I'm sure we're all familiar with the different facets of wishing and longing, of deep spiritual yearning. My experience with this sort of desire directly relates to my experience as a recovering addict. There are several different phases of recovery, but the general understanding is that the longer one abstains from active addiction, the more the desire for the object subsides, and the easier it is to begin to investigate the source of the desire, to distance one's self from the object, to distance one's identity from the desire. For a long time, I would tell people that my brain was trying to kill me. There was a running dialogue in my mind of desiring something, craving it physically and emotionally, and knowing that it was the path to my own self-destruction. It created in me obsession and compulsion that I couldn't control. And my desire took control and told me what to do. And I was powerless to say no. I can't really explain how I was able to actually physically stop. That moment of quitting was a series of fortuitous events and what I call a bit of holy intervention and luck. But I can tell you that since that holy moment of quitting, it has been the act of investigating the desire and being honest about it with myself that's been a large part of what has continued to keep me sober. Investigating my desire, questioning what is beneath my illogical yearning for drugs and alcohol continues to inspire my spiritual life. What is it that I really want? It was never the alcohol that I really wanted. It was something else. What I've since identified as a deep spiritual yearning for what is holy and sacred. Jungian psychologist Marian Woodman says, we go looking for spirit and find spirits. And I identify with that, with looking for God at the bottom of a glass of gin and tonic. And for a while, finding it, only to discover it was all an illusion. In her book, Addiction to Perfection, Woodman redefines female desire, and that as women, we are socialized to accept the external version of ourselves rather than our own internal truth. We learn to listen to others rather than ourselves and attempt to conform ourselves to what we are told we should be. Investigating my desire meant finding out who I was, what I wanted, and trusting that I knew what was best for myself and not some external source, that the holy and the sacred were inside me, and that I had everything I needed to be whole and healthy, that I am worthy just as I am. And in fact, despite what popular culture tells us about the ego, how we need to smash the ego or deny it, I found that my ego desires serve a purpose. It's okay to want what I want if I understand why. My ego desires are like an arrow pointing to my wisdom. For instance, I'm attracted to the idea of living on a farm. I see myself in overalls in a large vegetable garden surrounded by acres of horses and sheep. The reality is I don't really like farm work, but my ego has painted this romantic picture. I'm not going to go out and buy a farm, but I am going to ask myself, what is it that I really want? The tension between what I really want and what I am told that I should really want is really the source of why I began to drink and use drugs in the first place. When the faith I was raised with as a child didn't work for me anymore, when I didn't want what I was told I should want, I rebelled and gave into wanting nothing, believing that my true desires, my true longing for the holy and the sacred was somehow bad or wrong. Investigating my desires means that what I really want is okay. And even if at first the image of what I want is romantic and implausible, if I honor that image and ask myself, okay, what is it that I really want? 
I will find the truth. The image of myself as a farmer comes from my childhood where I grew up on a little farm and it's a lovely desire. I find joy a lot of times in just desiring it and imagining it, which is the final thing I wanna share with you. Through recovery, I have learned to sit with my desire, to make friends with it, even the self-destructive ones. They all have something to teach me. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but the longer I can sit with it, the more I learn about myself. I wanna encourage you today or this week to take a moment and really sit with your desire. Is there something you want? Maybe it's a bit self-destructive or even dangerous. Is there some longing you have, a romantic picture in your mind that feels impossible to make happen? Don't be afraid of looking at it, sitting with it, investigating it. Perhaps you will sit with the desire and discover something deeper about yourself and your holy yearning, even if only a renewed commitment to an impossible dream. Or maybe you will find that there is something else you truly desire, something that is holy and sacred to you and no one else. May you honor that longing inside of yourself. May you trust yourself and what you hold most sacred and know that it is enough, and that you are enough, just as you are.